is a message from Melody to who's, the other party. And who's Blue? Blue would be a message from Amanda to the other party. Okay. If you could read into the record the 943 text message. I got Gary's phone. He booked and paid for condo for Chris and Jenna. I'm beyond furious. And Amanda's response at 9.55. Oh, big surprise. Melody's response to Amanda. He's wrong for doing it, and when I specifically said no, and had just reason. And what is Amanda's response to Melody? Yep, Chris will never grow up. This is the same date? Yes. July 2nd. And what was Melody's response to Amanda? But he refuses to help you with Dennis. <clears throat> And then Amanda says, yep, can't stop him. It's ridiculous. Keep what going. is Melody's response to Amanda? This is my last straw with him. And the next message from Melody to Amanda is at what time? 3.07 p.m. On the same date, July 2nd? Yes. What does she say to Amanda? So Scott left at 8 this morning, gone to play golf, still gone. Then tomorrow goes to Lake, so help me God. Is this still July 2nd? Yes. All right, so we have introduced some new people. Who have we introduced? This is Gary Ferris, depicted in the green border and the green message. So Gary is in green when he's the <clears throat> one sending the message? Correct. Okay, and this is between Melody and Gary at 3.07 p.m. Can you read that text, please? Did you book a condo for Chris and Jenna? And what does Gary say? I booked one for me and the girls as well. And then? At, that was at 3.08, and at 3.14 p.m., what does Melody say to Amanda? Just giving you a heads up about things. Chris continues to charge his cable, phone, and airline tickets to Gary's checking account. Charge their honeymoon and their beach trip year you got married to us as well. Now another beach trip after I told him no and why. He never paid BK, Jenna's ring that was financed by us. I have had it. I'm taking measures to stop this insanity. Are these messages verbatim the messages found in the phone? Yes. So BK, that is how it was typed in the phone. Correct. During day 14 of the Melody Ferris trial, we saw text messages exchanged between Gary, Melody, and Amanda, which shed light on a troubling pattern. It's not uncommon for parents to discuss sibling issues with their children, but what we see in these messages goes far beyond simple conversation. Melody appears to be pitting her children against one another, seemingly for her own benefit or enjoyment. Throughout the trial, we've seen how she manipulates her family dynamics, creating tension and mistrust between her children. This isn't just a casual miscommunication, it's a consistent attempt to control the family narrative and set her kids against each other. In the early days of the trial, Emily described an incident where she and her husband had planned to smoke meat for an upcoming family event. They had everything arranged, but just before the gathering, Melody suddenly informed Emily that her brother, Scott, would be handling the meat instead. Emily hinted that she suspected her mother was behind this sudden switch, which left her feeling sidelined. What Emily suspected is powerful, it shows that she's been aware of her mother's divisive ways for years. When we add in the text exchanges between Amanda and Melody, a clearer picture forms. A mother who not only tolerates but encourages discord. It's no wonder Chris turned to alcohol with a mother like Melody. A mother like Melody can have a profound and damaging impact on her family. Instead of fostering closeness and unity, she drives a wedge between her children. Children of manipulative parents often grow up with feelings of distrust, confusion, and self-doubt, which can take years to overcome, if they ever do. When a mother encourages rivalry and resentment, it leaves lasting emotional scars. Kids in this environment may struggle with self-esteem, trusting others, and even forming their own healthy relationships later in life. The family becomes less of a support system and more of a battleground, and those effects don't simply vanish as they get older. They linger, shaping their lives in deep and often painful ways. But this trial doesn't just make us question her relationship with her children, it also raises questions about what both Gary and Rusty saw in her. What in the world did Gary see in Melody to stay with her for so long? And what about Rusty? He's seen her place the blame for Gary's murder on her own son. And not only that, she lied to Rusty during their affair, 
claiming that Gary had cancer. Just yesterday, we listened to a phone call between Rusty and Melody where she complained about the costs of Gary's funeral, her tone was cold and heartless. And yet, Rusty still chooses to be with a woman like that? It's hard to understand how any man would willingly stay with someone so manipulative. Rusty comes across as a weak man willing to go along with Melody's schemes, which leaves us wondering, does he see her true colors, or is he just too enamored to care? And if Melody treats her own children like pawns, it's only a matter of time before she expects Rusty to fall in line, or else. In these messages, we see Melody expressing anger over a planned beach trip. It's worth noting that Melody was invited to join them on this trip, but she chose not to go. On July 2nd, she told Amanda that she had had it and planned to take measures to stop this insanity. The very next day, on July 3rd, she told Rusty that Gary was on the burn pile, and she made this statement at a time when no one even knew Gary was missing or dead. Hearing these texts read out in court, does Melody ever wonder how differently things might have turned out if she had just gone on that beach trip, or even visited Rusty, instead of taking her anger to such extremes? It's possible that Melody is completely innocent, but to me, it seems unlikely. Her anger over this beach trip, along with her ominous warning about taking measures, paints a disturbing picture. I believe Melody was that furious about the trip, and she was serious when she said she was going to stop this. These messages suggest more than just frustration, they hint at a resolve that may have gone much further than anyone in her family could have anticipated. I'd love to hear what you all think. How do you view Melody's behavior toward her children? Why do you think Rusty remains devoted to her, despite everything he's seen? And finally, what impact do you think this trial will have on her family dynamics moving forward? And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe.